Okay. It's it's a good job you said the words Barrow because I'd totally forgotten to do the preview of this week's game. Um, minor details. So we're away at Barrow this weekend. Uh, sixth place Barrow. Yeah. Who have played four games and got taken seven points uh, and have a goal difference of one uh, as opposed to 15th place Wrexham who've played four games, five points and a goal difference of zero. Uh, highest scorers... Worst defence. Wor- uh, yeah, well, I don't know what the... Yeah, worst defence. Um, so, uh, it's inter- this season's really interesting for me because the vast majority of teams I know little about, which is why me and you are in League 2... Spaces at seven thirty on a stupid night. I can't oh, yeah, even remember when we did it. Too. When we yeah. were both there and we were yeah. messaging each other about it, uh, trying to learn little bits, of, get little bits of information uh, about these clubs because we've just we, a lot of them. About, well, Barrow, it won't be that long actually since we played them. But lots of these other clubs we've not played in years, and you don't, yeah. you know, you don't show much interest in them sure. because uh, you know we've not we've not been there. Um, but uh, Barrow's form, obviously, they uh, lost to Stockport, I think it was, on Saturday. Um, drew with Accrington, beat Sutton, lost to Bolton. That was a cup game, I think, uh, and beat Tranmere on the opening day. Mm-hmm. So um, no mugs. I don't think many of these teams are mugs. I think we're, we're learning that, aren't we? Yes, um, we are, quickly. So I, don't, what, so I guess from, from our point of view, no, what what are we thinking? He's not going to change formation, is he? No. Or we're going to be surprised if he changes formation, you know, well, very surprised. given well, the injuries and stuff. We, we we say that we say that, and then last year, last year, one of Parky's, um, you know, a lot of the fans said he didn't have a plan B and yep. those types of things, formation wise. He went to more of a box midfield against uh, was it was it Wigan in in the cup game. Uh, was it that one? No, it was the Wimbledon. Was it Wimbledon? Wimbledon. There you go. He, went he played to... McLean and Lee behind he did. Palmer. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he went to yeah. he went to a little bit more of a box midfield, which that's I don't want to say it's a yeah. Game. I agree. It, it shocked it's me. A practical change. So yeah. Again, McLean's out on injury right now, so. I don't think we're going to have a box midfield on Saturday. And Davis, and Davis, you see, as well. Those yeah, two, that, other, that other person yeah. that you would probably have with Lee That's is probably box. out injured. Yeah. So, um, you know, we lose those we lose those um, corners of the box, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't think there will be a, a, you know, a – I don't think there will be a tactical change. Um, I don't think there will be a schematic change. The biggest thing is going to be – Who's in goal? Very yes. likely Howard because of the continuity. Um, do we get Hayden back uh, in time to play Saturday? Does he go straight in? For me, he does. For a lot of fans, he does. I get, get it. One of the backs a blow. Get one of your best. Uh, you know, <laughs> again, like we said earlier, double digit scoring. Yeah. So that's uh, goal scoring center back for just another goal threat who's also a quality defender. Um, and in the midfield, again, I, I will beat this into the damn ground right now. For me, it's got to be Lee, Young, Tom O'Connor. It takes care of a lot of things that myself and a lot of other fans think we're missing at this point in the season. Um, it gives us some versatility in midfield. Um, and again, you know, wingers, likely Mendy, Ford or Barnett come back in. You know, um, that, for me, it's for me, it's Ford at this point. Ford I agree. Four last, especially Barnett. away from home. Exactly, exactly. That experience. Um, I also think he offers a little bit more defensively than than Barnett does as well. Um, but you know, the the questions abound. Um, not that you ask for a, a side rundown. A no, 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 no. But that's fine. Yeah, no, but okay. um, I think it's it's um, again. We'll see what's up with Palmer. Is he injured? Is he not? If he is injured. Um, for me, it's it's uh, Dolby and Bickerstaff up front um, for that you know big and little combination that that Parky likes to uh, to start a lot right now. And unless Elliot Lee goes back up front, which I really don't want to see that. I think no. he's in front. I think he needs to stay in midfield. So for me, the I strike, agree. If Palmer's out, um, would, would be Dolbs. Dolby and Bickerstaff going forward to Saturday. Yeah, two one win away at Barrow for the Reds. Okay, so a couple of things. Yeah, I uh, I think unless we suddenly sign somebody, it's definitely going to be Mark Howard. I don't think there's any chance that they drop anybody else in personally. But I, you know, 
could be wrong. Mm. I'd like to see Ford back in to start Agreed. because I think that experienced body away from home, I think, that I, and I think Barnett coming on against tired legs would be more effective. Agreed. Super effective, um, yeah. But uh, let's see. Only Mendy can start on the left. He had a, he did have a rough game, I thought. Um, but I don't think McFadzine is good enough to push him. And then McLean's injured, so, and I don't think he'll bring McAlinden in out of nowhere to play left wing back. So, so that, hundred percent agree about the midfield. Um, Elliot Lee has never worked up front for me. We tried it first of all. If you remember, do you remember the game we tried it first? Last uh, last year. I, I You'll kick yourself it. when I say it. Was it Knotts? No. Chesterfield? It was no, it was the away game at Blythe Spartans and he played oh, up front with Dolby. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And it didn't seem to work. We drew that game, did was it nil nil or one all? I can't remember. We drew yeah, that we, game. We drew, we we drew, drew that game and played. just never made an impression. Um yeah. and I don't I haven't seen it work at all yet. So again, yeah. I'm with you. I hope he plays in that midfield role because he excels in there. When he can drop deep on that left hand side uh, and start creating. Um that's where he really becomes uh, really effective. So from that point of view, and I'm with you, I think if there's any doubt about Dol- uh, about Palmer, I think you put Dolby in, to be honest, because we can't afford to have any more injured players. So if he isn't quite, if he's fit enough, but not quite fit enough, I don't, don't take the risk. Let's put Dolby up front and bring Palmer on if we need him. But I think Bickers yeah. has to start for me. Um, I think we're, we're kind of universally agreed now that everybody thinks probably Bickerstaff is currently the, the, the forward that has you know, been most effective. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing, and we, we, didn't, we, we, haven't, we haven't talked about this a ton, um, just, I guess, final point from the, you know, from the starting side. I've got a few concerns about that triangle over on the left side with Mindy Boyle, and okay. again, who, whoever's um, you know in that midfield kind of deep defense. It's role. Lee that drops into there normally. Yeah, yeah I get it. I, I've yeah. got a little bit of concern just because one Boyle knew, so yeah. the continuity is not there, but we seem to lose possession a pretty decent bit. Um, in, in that in that triangle right there in that area between Mindy Boyle uh, and, and whoever again drops into that that third with them, yeah. um, it, it, I, I I don't know if there's a fix. I don't know what it is. Um, you just hope that with more minutes with more continuity that those those guys play better. Um, those three specifically. Um, again, Boyle dropping down levels. He's got championship experience and all the things that we've talked about before on the pods and spaces and stuff like that. I have no doubt um, that they will come right, but. I agree with you. Um, I think the midfield three, um, again, I'm praying that the midfield three on Saturday at Barrow Way will be um, will be Young Lee and O'Connor. Um, but we will see what happens, my friend. Is there any way that Max Cloweth drops into this defence? Oh, Max guy. You know I'm a big Max Cloweth guy. Uh, short answer is no, unfortunately, um, because of age and experience and those types of things. Okay. When you- when you when you when you pay the wages that we paid for Boyle and yeah yeah yeah, 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 O'Connell, yeah. and then you've got Tozer who's a club captain yeah I mean I just there's not a there's not necessarily a way forward in my opinion um, especially this early in the season a league match where there's not really tired legs yet because it's so early in the season um, would love to see Max get some minutes maybe on the bench um, late on in a match if we're just you know pumping somebody. You know, Four nil, five. Yeah, yeah. Four. yeah. Uh, don't think it happens this early though. Okay, yeah. The only reason I asked the question is he's the only other defender that we know is fit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well unless something's starting, happened today, yes, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And I just, if you're searching, if you're parking and you're searching for something, and you think, well, I'm, you make a change just for change's sake, then yeah. would that be something? That, so I agree with you. I don't think he, I'm playing devil's advocate, really. I don't think he would start him. Uh, he's, I suspect he starts in the cup game uh, that we got coming oh, up. Oh, 100%, yes. But um, I just wondered whether anybody else thought something different to what I was thinking. I didn't think he did, but whether, um, you know, people thought, well, actually, that, is, that you know, there is a chance. Um, yeah. But I will say this. Um, 
Uh, you might not remember this. Is, I'm going to call it Wrexham Season 1 post-takeover. Um, when Wrexham won away at Halifax, uh, Paul Mullins scored the winner late on. 85th minute or something, we got uh, a winner. Um, if you watch uh, Simon Cook's video, he did a brilliant video. There was bodies oh, coming over people's yes, heads and stuff, yes, right? Yes, yes. But in, in that okay. game... Yeah. In that game, Halifax had a defender who, when they scored, was really rubbing it up with the away fans. His name was Tyrrell Warren. And Mr. Warren now resides at Barrow. Uh, so it will be very interesting if he gets a little bit back. I would obviously not encourage anybody to give him any stick, for away Never. fans. Never. Don't do that. That would be terrible if you Never. could... Uh, Never. If you, if, you, if you could do that to Mr. Warren, that would be, it would be awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take you. You said a win. I'm at this point, given where we are, injuries and players wise, I'll be happy with a point. Especially away. I away think. away from home, in the Lake District, Cumbria sort of way. I think Barrow is. Um, we we'll have their stadium only holds about five and a half thousand people, I believe. Um, yep. I just, oh, I've lost it now. I did have it up. It's not a big stadium, so. It's um, not. Uh, we won't have a, really, we won't have a two thousand sort of travelling army like we yeah. would uh, nearly everywhere else. Although I noticed Stockport five thousand three hundred. I noticed Stockport today have decided not to give as many tickets as well. They, they did. They've decided to sell some of their tickets to home fans and reduce us to about nine hundred. Um, so that's going to be a scramble. So yeah. yeah, so we won't obviously have, but we'll be loud. The away fans are always a good group. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict a draw. I'm gonna fair. take a one-all draw, a low-scoring draw. We probably won't keep a clean sheet, will we? I'm not confident enough that we'll keep a clean <laughs> sheet out of nowhere. We, we don't know everything, but we've got to look at the facts that we're presented. And, yeah, we uh, can see three a goal, three three goals a game at the moment. Yeah. So the clean clean sheets are few and far between in general. It's a difficult thing to do, and uh, you know when you got a you, unless you're chilling them. Uh, yeah. You just win one nil every game, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, Foster just fresh in retirement this morning. Um, I think it'll be difficult, um, to say the least, to get a clean sheet. But again, it, it's it's one of those to where this team and the reason I say a win away at Barrow this yeah. weekend is, is this team is um, obviously has shown um you know a lot of character and the ability to battle back from adversity and those types of things you're down four one at halftime party goes in enthusiasm meter goes up to <laughs> astronomical levels inevitably and then they come out and uh <laughs> you know pump pump four past <laughs> pump four past the wind into the second half so um I, I i think it's one of those to where you know the team and the boys are going to rally around mark uh who you know, super Mark Howard and goal. And yeah. uh, hopefully the team rallies around him and uh, we come out with three points. I'll tell you what is interesting. Uh, we'll, and we'll finish on this um, about that game uh, with Swindon. Because they're not there every game, but the documentary crew were definitely there for that game. If you remember, they weren't actually there for the Dover game. They so they were relying on footage from, uh, uh, you know, uh, from other from fans and from streamers from the uh, from the the TV yeah, people, yeah. but the documentary crew pe- were definitely there on, uh, on. So they might have some really good insight to the dressing room and the halftime and team oh, talks yeah. and oh, what yeah. have you. So that might make uh, that <laughs> might make some epic uh, epic sort of uh, documentary viewing. And yeah. I've got a bone to pick with you actually, because it's only a small. It's only a, it's, this is a small one, right? Um, uh, I, I can't remember which spaces it was. Somebody, we were talking, we'd got talking about the documentary about the trailer. So this is going back. Oh, when did the trailer come out? Was it a week or two weeks ago? Uh, two weeks ago. Two, uh, whenever it was. And you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks, you know, it looks really, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, it looks really good. Millie's in it. Looks brilliant. And I was sat there thinking, this looks rubbish because there's no Michael Starkey in this trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Because you there and I both know be... Mr. Starkey. No, but that, no, no, for, no. for a weekend, there was cameras pointed at you. Uh, no. So, there, no, there, it doesn't look good enough to me yet. There were cameras pointed at a lot of people, my friend. Um, there were cameras pointed at us. And, <laughs> I mean, you know how it works. That there's They shoot so much footage. They shoot so much film over the course of the year that uh, the chances that anyone gets in the documentary is um incrementally small and you know me well enough to know that 
I could not possibly care less. <laughs> I want the club to win against Barrow on Saturday. That is all I want is three points. You said to me, else is icing on the cake, my friend. You said to me you were going to cancel your Hulu subscription if you weren't in that documentary. <laughs> Christ. I didn't know we were going to be just lying on this podcast today, Matt. I don't even have a Hulu subscription, so I can't cancel it. But it sounds like a good narrative you're creating, so I'm just going to let you go with it, my friend. Right. Well, we we can end properly now because obviously we've yes, we we've covered everything. Now, yes, we right. can. Yes, we can. <laughs>